what's going on guys welcome back to my personal channel welcome back to another review it's the fa cup final it's arsenal 2 chelsea 1 down to just your screens it's not 2017 again this bullshit really struck twice and it's because of that egghead of a fucking referee now before i start this video just want to say don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G if you haven't done so already. That subscribe button is red right now. And I swear down, if I see any more red tonight, I'm actually going to swing for something. So please press that subscribe button and change the color if you haven't done so already. Because I'm finished with seeing fucking red unless it's a record button. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's go straight into this video. Now, the lineup everyone's gonna say it didn't work out as well than we previously expected we should have changed that half time but initially at the start it was the right thing to go for i thought we were gonna go five at the back and it was sorry for the bup and it was the same five players that we initially expected to see reese james right back alonso left wing back asby rudiger and zuma as the three center backs georgie cover in midfield and i thought the pivot was gonna do well but we really did get over in the midfield and up front it was mount pulisic and Giroud. now 11 men did their best against 12 men but it was going to be a back to the wall performance when you got the referee in your pocket and we struggled today we had an amazing start to the game though brilliant build-up play from Jorginho and pulisic to set up christian pulisic's goal for the first goal and another nice setup from olivier Giroud in an fa cup final and it looked like things were going perfect for Chelsea at that point. But Arsenal started creeping more and more into the game as the first half progressed. They got a penalty off an Aspel Equator challenge with, let's be real, you couldn't really do much if you really look at it. It was 1v1 as Asp is going to lose that battle when it comes to pace against Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. And it got called for a penalty and Aubameyang put it into the net. It is what it is. Caballero is a good penalty take penalty saver uh Bamiang's a good penalty taker so it is what it is first half we went in 1-1 also looked like the better team but we did look like we would capitalize a bit more in the second half if we played the game a bit better if we changed tactics Anthony Taylor was giving nothing our way nine fouls got called for Arsenal compared to a big fat zero for Chelsea and we thought the second half would be a bit different but no the second half we got injected with a nice fresh dose of bs every 10 minutes first thing first is christian pulisic coming off of an injury which you can't really blame anyone for i mean the guy's running through on goal and his hamstring pulls up it's not the ref's fault it's not arsenal's fault it's not chelsea's fault it just is what it is you just gotta take it on the chin and try and move forward and we did try and do that, but I really think we should have gone with three in the, in midfield, or at least tried to bring N'Golo Kante onto the pitch a little bit sooner because we were getting overrun in midfield. And I think that's where Frank Lampard got it wrong today. We should have changed up the formation a little bit earlier. We should have gone for at the back. And as soon as Pulisic came off, we lost that bite and attack as well. Olivier Giroud tried. I will say that he did try. And I thought he brought the ball down well. And I thought he had a nice physical battle with the Arsenal defenders. But he didn't really have much place to bring it out into. Mason Mount was already on a booking for absolutely nothing. But this fucking egghead Tom Henning of Raybo reject gave him a booking for nothing. And they made it 2-1 because Rudiger decided to bollocks up another 1v1. And I swear, down, I can't believe that we thought Antonio Rudiger was going to be a saving grace for us when he came back from injury a few months ago. And he's turned out to be the worst one on the channel by a mile. He got done by Hector Bellerin for that first for that second goal. He was getting done most of the most of the goals. Kurt Zuma, I'll be real, he didn't have much of a great game either. But I thought defensively he was decent. It was just playing the ball out of the back that he struggled with. And I've said it before with Kurt Zuma. Don't overhype him too much. Because he's great at recovery tackles. He's great defensively. But on the ball, he is shaky. He is suspect. And he can get caught out. And it's what happened again today. And it's the thing with our centre-backs. And it's a rolling circle of, we'll big them up for what they're good at. But we'll completely forget about what they're bad at until it's right in front of our face. Our defenders... 
Bruv, Rudiger, man, he should have had a much better performance today. He should have been a lot more stable. He should have been a lot more calmer. But what did he do? He threw his body in front of everything. And that works against teams that are much better than us, like a Manchester City, where they will just play around you at will. And you have to throw your body at shots at times. But a game like this against one of the worst Arsenal sides in Premier League history... I get a 12 v 10, but we got overran for ages and we really should have done much better. That Bamiang goal for the second one, he handled it pretty well. I'm not going to say anything about that, but it could have been avoided if our defense wasn't so silly. It really could have been avoided. After that second goal, Mateo Kovacic got sent off for literally fuck all. Literally fuck all. If you look back at the challenge, nothing happened. He barely touched him and the guy called a yellow. He changed his mind and made an even worse decision. This Tom Henning of Rabo fucking reject. Killed an FA Cup final with his bullshit. 11 v 11, we would have had these guys. We really would have had these guys. We would have gone down swinging. And if we went down swinging, I wouldn't say anything about it. But the referees actually killed this fucking game. The, the ref actually killed this FA Cup final. We had everything against us from being 12 men to 11 down to having our best defender out with an injury, our best attacker out with an injury, and our, and our best midfielder sent off for nothing. And as soon as that happened and it went down to 10 men, the game was basically finished. Oh, we know about Arteta's game management. When he sees an open goal like that, man's just going to shoot and he's going to score. And the game was just game, set and match from then. But it was absolute BS. There could have been a much more even cup final if not everything was against us. And I can't believe that we've given these bums another good end to a terrible season. The same way we did after 2017. These guys are going to celebrate like they won the league, you know. You see the way they celebrate the 2-2 draw. And now they have a victory under even worse circumstances than that draw in January. These men are going to think they won the Champions League or something. And I can't be bothered to hear it. I really can't be bothered to hear it. All I can do, all I can hope for is that long term this leads to a bigger decline because they actually think this season means something. They probably think Arteta is actually going to help them now because they've actually won a trophy. But in reality, the resources he has behind with Stan Kroenke buying ranches every six months, they're going to be back in mid-table just like the rest. Let's go straight into the player ratings. We'll start in goal with Willy Caballero. Didn't have much to do past the goals. Arsenal's attack was better than us, but they didn't really have much chances either. I'm not going to blame him for you for the goals either. I'm just going to give him a five and move on. As for Laqueta, barely played much the match. Ah, oh, Maitland Niles. Oh, after all the shit troops was chatting as well, and he actually had a good fucking game to match as well. I can't be bothered. I can't give Aspilicueta a good rating because he was only on the pitch for like a third of the match. And he conceded a penalty as well. So I'm going to give him a free. Kurt Zuma, decent defensively, but on the ball, poor. I'm, I'm going to give him a four. Antonio Rudiger, I'm going to give him a three. Didn't handle Pepe at all. He just got done. Got done by Bellerin for the second goal as well and looked rash most of the match. Three for Rudiger. Reese James, I'm going to give him a six. I thought he had a lot of, he helped us have a lot of width around the pitch. We didn't utilize him enough, in my opinion. I thought, didn't have a bad game. I'm going to give him a six. Jorginho, uh, didn't really have much. Decent at uh, recycling the ball, but again, wasn't as progressive as we wanted to see from him. And Sabios had him on ropes, which I hate saying, but it is what it is. Jorginho is going to get a five. Kovacic, five as well. Got tackled a lot and the referee didn't give him shit because this referee literally had rose-tinted red and white glasses and got sent off for absolutely nothing. Didn't really have much of the incisiveness that I wanted to see in the match and I thought he struggled with the Arsenal midfield as the game possess progressed, so I'm going to give him a five. Alonso, car crash in defense, barely effective in attack. I'm going to give him a four. We need a left back. Straight up, we just need a left back because, bro, I've said enough. Alonso only stays in this team because he's a decent left wing back, but we played him in this position and we still bummy as hell. So 
is what it is. Mason Mount faded away in the second half, but had a very strong first half performance. Started the Chelsea press as he usually does. Promising, and I feel like he wishes he could have a better performance or a better end to the match, but I'm going to give him a six. Pulisic, Arsenal couldn't handle him. He was brilliant until that injury, and it's so annoying to see him come off of that injury because it could have been a completely different game without that. But he comes off injured at half time. I'm going to give him a seven because he didn't play most of the match. Olivier Drude going to get a seven as well. He had a brilliant assist for Pulisic's opening goal, but didn't have much support going forward and lost most of the passes forward after bringing the ball down. So I'm going to give him a seven. Andreas Christensen, five. Thought he was decent when he came on, but didn't really offer much to us. Pedro. Six. I might, I'm pushing to give him a second, a seven, because I feel like if every Chelsea player played the way he did, we would have, we would have gone down swinging a lot more. But he also came off injured, so I'm going to give him a six. Tammy Abraham. Don't even think I'm going to give him a rating. Had barely any service and didn't do anything. Same thing for Hudson Odoi. Barely did anything. Barkley got booked. Barely did anything. So I'm not giving any of them ratings. This is the FA Cup final. A farce of a final because a referee decided to ruin it for two cup finals in a row. Don't forget to like and subscribe and peace.